the secret of the inner earth. Like the human being, the planet itself also has dimensions. These seven bodies are seven main energy gates, also called chakras or sun gates. They are the activation gates. The masters of Lemuria and Atlantis knew about the main geomantic energy vortices. With the help of extraterrestrial technology and levitation, they built large pyramids onto these centers of energy. Therefore, pyramids around the world stand on these gates of energy in order to mark the power centers. They are situated in the jungles of the Amazon, in the highlands of Mexico, on the ocean floors of the Atlantic and the Pacific, under the desert of Taklamakan, in China and many other places on Earth. Many of these pyramids were built underground and will be discovered in the near future. Pyramids are the mirror of human evolution with the four dimensions. God is the fifth dimension and exists beyond the pyramid. This is why the last stone of each four-faced pyramid is missing. Hence the stone of completion is the unification of man with the creator in the fifth dimension. That is the reason why human beings have five fingers. They are created for the fifth dimension. The reality of massive engineering tools in Egypt, of course, is something that is not presently known. The existence of huge interior structures with mathematical precision that range in size from some 20 centimeters for the air shafts to the massive chambers known as the kings and queens chamber that require blocks of some 2 to 20 tons apiece suggest a parent technology that is no longer known to our present Western society. When the documentary Mysteries of the Sphinx was being made, the engineers asked themselves, how could these massive blocks be moved into position? It was obvious from special consultants who were moving upwards of 200 tons that there was no present technology that could take these very large massive blocks from the quarries and move them up some 480 feet above the surface of the earth unless there was a superior parent technology. In talking with specialists in hypersonic vibrations in New York and Chicago, it was suggested that a type of vibratory source, perhaps a quarter of a mile in length, would have to be necessary as some airborne platform that would require the vibratory mechanisms necessary to move these large blocks into place. Certainly our use of certain sound techniques inside the chambers show that the Great Pyramid is a type of vibratory laser and if it can be activated properly in my interpretation could allow us to understand how certain sound structures can move massive blocks of stone. The high priests used the pyramids as initiation temples because the energy inside the pyramids was so powerful that students or neophytes through meditation were carried into a different dimension of consciousness. The student with his physical body and senses was moved into a higher world. Thus he could perceive the spiritual world. Until this very day, another great secret remains. The pyramids were used as natural doors of dimension gates, as openings and doors leading to the inner earth. As much as there is an outer world, there is, because of polarity, an inner world. In other words, the earth is hollow. As things are on a small scale, so they are on a large scale. Hermes Trimagistos taught that everything in the universe is set up according to the same organizational plan. One could say that the Earth is like a huge atom, hollow inside, with a nucleus at the center which represents the inner sun. Just as we humans do not see the outer curve of the globe, 
one is not able to perceive the inner curve when entering Hyperea, the legendary lost crystal cities of Agatha. The initiated were able to get in touch with the civilizations of the inner earth through gates. Until the sinking of Atlantis, this was general knowledge. Plato in his book, The Timaeus, speaks about an earlier civilization, a race of godlike beings, at least 9,000 years before the time of the peoples of Athens. He also speaks of how the great historian Solon refers to Egypt as a colony of Atlantis. It is clear from evidences we have recently made in Mesoamerica, specifically in Guatemala, with the ancient canal system that we have uncovered through remote sensing radar that it was there in Central America where North and South tectonic plates meet, where there are great statues called the Atlans, that there was indeed some type of civilization that could be called Atlantean. Clearly the evidence is in Egypt of great structures beneath the sands of Giza, as well as the evidences of great structures beneath Gobi in the Far East suggest that Atlantean models of higher intelligence were over the earth at a much earlier historic period, suggesting that Atlantis was a type of civilization rather than a specific place of people, technology, worship, and belief. Where is the entrance to the inner earth? My feeling is that these are openings several hundred kilometers wide, not more than that. Uh, one on the North Pole, one on the South Pole. They may exist in a different dimension. They may be made visible at will or from time to time depending on certain um, cosmic and uh, terrestrial conditions. These are more of uh, speculations. However, I know for sure that, for example, polar flights are forbidden to fly straight over the pole. They always deviate away. After a very suspicious crash of a New Zealand airliner, a chartered airliner in late 70s, early 80s, that was supposed to fly over the South Pole looking for the opening of the inner earth. After Atlantis, only a few nations and river and the Hopi Indians knew of the entrances to huge underground cities. They reported that shortly before the cyclical end of humankind, the seed for the next humankind was brought to safety in the inner earth by beings. Human beings with white and bluish skin and golden angelic hair who traveled in flying saucers from the inner earth. Last century, various scientists searched for the pole openings. Accordingly, the South Pole is supposed to be the head chakra of the earth and have an enormous pole opening. The North Pole would be the root chakra. During this century, two great efforts were made to find these pole openings and to make contact with the extraterrestrial races who built the underground cities within the Earth. The first expedition was led by Admiral Byrd before the Second World War. The second was carried out by the secret Tula organization which pulled the strings behind the Nazis. Both expeditions were successful. Byrd discovered the pole openings during an expedition for the USA. know about uh, Operation High Jump, about Admiral Byrd's expedition in the autumn of 46, the early spring of 47, to the South Pole. And this is an expedition that has been almost forgotten and it's very hard to come up with any information about it. Uh, the few articles that were published at that time in uh, 
let's say, National Geographic magazine would not give any clue to the real intention of that expedition. However, recently we discovered a, a unique documentary film in color, one hour long, made by the U.S. Navy. It was a massive naval operation that uh, involved uh, an aircraft carrier, uh, several battleships, an armed submarine, and probably another 20 supply and battleships. Um, it involved 4,000 troops, um, uh, U.S. troops, and the rumor is that there were also British and Russian contingents uh, within these 4,000 troops. It was a massive uh, naval operation. It was not as it has been presented to the public that it was a peaceful expedition to explore the natural resources of the South Pole. They descended to Little America, which is uh, the place of the previous Admiral Byrd landings on the South Pole. And then they started a massive uh, overflight over uh, the whole area of the South Pole, trying to locate the German base uh, that was established there uh, almost 10 years earlier. The Germans started somewhere in 1936-37, seriously exploring the South Pole. And by the time the war ended, the rumor is that they have established a massive underground colony with at least 100 thousand um, scientists, researchers, elite SS troops, uh, children from Hitler Jugend, young boys and girls that were to become the seed of this new and uh, colony that uh, was to be built under the, uh, the, uh, uh, the principles of the um, super race selection. In our research in Africa, the Far East, and in the mountains of South America, we have come across statuary of very grotesque beings who, according to the Indian and shamanistic tradition, went into the earth at a time of a great cataclysm. If we take Atlantis as a model for survival, it is clear in the folklore and literature of the major continents of our planet that some of the races went into the earth. And I brought with me from Africa pictures of these grotesque serpent-like beings. Many of them correspond to the extraterrestrial reports and photographs of some of these so-called snake people or serpent people. It is very clear also that there was the survival of the ancestry of the Adamic race referred to in our scriptures as well as in the teachings of the Hungarian and German people that came out of the Gobi area. It is in this area of Lapnor that we have recently found evidences of an earlier European type humanity that did survive some type of cataclysm according to the myths of the Far East. We have thus in our tradition a vast folklore, anthropology and cosmology that connect the peoples of this planet with that of other worlds. The Nazis were better informed by the secret esoteric orders and had exact knowledge about the lost cities of Agatha and Shambhala. Many of their expeditions involved searching for the entrances into the inner world and the lost techniques of the gods, that is UFOs, the Ark of the Covenant and much more. Thus, films like Indiana Jones are not mere fiction. German expedition in search of Agatha. Some esoteric correlations of the 19th century and of the Third Reich are hidden nowadays under a veil of the past. Thus, only some isolated relationships can be uncovered. For a while, Dietrich Eckhart lived at the foot of the mountain Untersberg and was initiated into the medieval mysteries and into the legends of caves. Adolf Hitler spent many hours with Dietrich Eckhart at the Oper Salzburg mountain, and both were followers of the hollow earth theory of Hans Erbinger. The Untersberg was already considered by the Templars to be a volcano with an access to the inner earth and to the legendary hollow world. Thus there are stories of the disappearances of people in the Untersberg and how, 60 years later, the same people surfaced without having aged. Other German legends deal with the myth of the end of the world, 
In the legends, King Barbarossa is asleep in the mountain, and after hundreds of years, he rises up with his knights for the last battle at the end of time, in order to help good triumph. I'm speaking now as a scientist. I do not want to confuse subsurface temples and grottos and structures of civilizations that go down approximately a mile or two from the surface of the earth with the so-called inner earth theory. In my work in Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia, it is clear that there are vast tunnel systems that go hundreds of kilometers under the mountains, allowing the Indian peoples to connect between national borders. We know also between Mexico and New Mexico and North America that the Indians have a subterranean system of corridors that allow the tribal federations from North America to meet even privately without notifying the American or Mexican authorities. Clearly, these structures are there as a result of some type of volcanic activity or catastrophic event some 28 million years ago, as we have measured in areas of North Mexico, where the surface of the Earth changed, allowing volcanic openings and porous materials to construct, as it were, underground cavities. Into these cavities, members of the human society found shelter from the noxious poisons and gases and orders of destruction that took place rather suddenly. If we look at our planetary system, there is an obvious grid of underground cavities from the areas of the Gobi areas of Central Asia to the areas of Malta in the Mediterranean to areas even of the mountains of Untersberg in Central Europe Mont Blanc, Jungfra, to areas we have specifically worked with with seismology in central North Mexico and also areas of the Andes. Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia in particular have underground structures that run for hundreds of kilometers. In Southeast Asia, we know that these structures also exist in the areas of Sumatra, Borneo, and Indonesia. Clearly throughout the world, there are major areas which seem to be contact points with parallel evolution. Dietrich Eckhart shaped Hitler's thinking more than we can imagine today. He also directed him towards a mediumistic education and showed him how to make contact with the spiritual world, in particular with the Germanic gods and the ancient Hyperia people from Agatha. Thus, the leader became a guided one who communicated with the spiritual world and the masters of Agatha. Only when he had developed these mediumistic attributes to the full did Dietrich Eckhart propagate the idea of a leader, Führer, in the Tula society and in the popular esoteric circles. Already in the First World War, the German military sent various expeditions, which later were known as German colonies. Some esoteric followers, like General Ludendorff, who had access to the foundations and connections to the secret orders and castles, supported the expeditions and their search for the lost cities and treasures of the old Atlantean high cultures. In the early 20s, in a privately financed expedition, Edmund Kiss explored various regions of South America and discovered a wide-ranging system of caves with an opening to the inner earth. The different esoteric societies with their secret orders, country estates and later also their castles were the meeting points of the esoteric elite which saw itself as guided to resurrect the old knowledge of Atlantis and of the Indo-Germanic prophecies. The society that dealt with the lost technology of the gods and their impelling force was the so-called Freel Society. This society collected all the information dealing with the technology of polarity and levitation. When the National Socialists came to power and the old leagues and alliances had accomplished their duty, the esoteric followers of the time began to carry out their expeditions at the state's cost. Various secret working circles financed by the Third Reich were established.
The committee of the group, Heirs of the Ancestors, was concerned with the study of races, and some high esoteric followers were contracted to investigate the past of the Aryan race with ordinary archaeologists and scientists. Many Third Reich expeditions were initiated through the orders and foundations. Edmund Kiss went for the second time to South America with an elite group of scientists and the latest technology in order to find and enter into the inner earth and Agatha. Allegedly, they found a spaceship from Atlantis in one of the bigger caves. The secret society, Akakor, was founded, whose role it was to further explore the technology, even in the event of a war. In the 80s, was ARD television correspondent Karl Brugger killed because he had published a book which alleged an active role of this same society up to the present day? I had the privilege of knowing Karl Brugger, the author of De Konek von Akakor, many years ago in Brazil, where we worked together with the white Indian peoples of the upper Amazon who spoke a dialogue very much like an ancient Germanic language and who had contact with the star people. Tragically, Karl Brugger was killed by someone in the Brazilian establishment who felt he had too much information on the Indian civilizations and perhaps knew too much about the genocide against the Indian peoples taking place. I dedicated my book, The Sphinx on Mars, to Karl Brugger, and in this book I show for the first time the historic pictures that NASA has of the pyramid structures on Mars as well as pictures of the pyramids in Brazil in South American places, suggesting that there was a historic connection between the planetary grid of energy places marked by pyramids and temples and those of other planetary bodies. Karl Brugger was one of the great historians, journalists, and humanists of the 20th century. It is very important for each of us to try to get in contact with his teaching, his legacy, because it forms the connecting link between the Indian peoples, the earlier Atlantean type peoples, or what is called in Central America the Atlans, the great giants who are blonde, and the European peoples to show a connecting bridge between civilizations and centuries. The chronic also refers to the coming of the extraterrestrial peoples, according to the Indians, at the beginning of the 21st century. Due to the misuse of science, the destruction of the planetary environment, the imbalance of knowledge, what we call Western civilization, the Untergang des Auslands, will come to a quick change with the appearance of the star people. And for this reason, we must keep our eyes and ears open to the signs from space of a new communication system connected also with the teachings of the Indian peoples. The South American Indians of the Andes recognize UFOs as brothers from the sky who have always been there, who are there today. They are not any more unique than an airplane, an airliner flying overhead with passengers aboard. To them, the brothers from the sky have always been there. They do, they do make contact with the Indians and they do treat people in remote areas where they cannot get to doctors, they, they heal them, they treat them medically, uh, they interact with the Indians and with primitive people both in the high plains and, the, and in the deep jungles. So when, when we began asking about these brothers from the sky, we discovered stories about these such contacts everywhere. And in the course of one of these stories, we were interested, we were introduced to an Indian from the upper Amazon, I think his name was Akunta, but I'm not sure at the present time, who offered to take us back into a civilization that he came from that was uh, primarily based on a European culture that was transported there or transposed there sometime about the end of World War II, and they had taken uh, scientists and uh, scientific research underground in an area in the upper Amazon where they had succeeded in developing disc-shaped aerial vehicles that they could use to go all over the world with. The society was, this Indian called the society Akakor. Uh, he said 
that he had guided a German uh, researcher by the name of Bruger, and I think his name was Martin Bruger, B-R-U-G-G-E-R, -G -G -E who was actually taken to the city and was afforded an opportunity to meet with some of, of the, the, the Europeans there. That Indian tribe in that area has many blue-eyed, blonde-haired Indians, and they appear to be descendants of a Germanic uh, a group of people that were taken there sometime in the middle 1940s. And now they have produced children and they are young adults and a society is flourishing there that is, is uh, advanced over the contemporary societies around them by substantial degree. Uh, we can take you back there. There is a man who lives in that area. His name is A.J. Geviard, who will be willing to introduce us to I either the Indian that guided Martin Bruger or other Indians from the same tribe who may be willing to take us back far enough to meet some of the members of that society. It's, it's operated as a closed society. They do not come out in, down the river and, and enter Western civilizations. When they come out, they come out in, in their spacecraft and pick up what they need and take it back into the society and they live in a closed environment, pretty much protected by the wilderness of the jungle itself. So it's possible to go back and investigate, further investigate, the evidence of the existence of Akakor uh, at, at any time. Uh, I, we can produce people who can do this. We can look at, at Mr. Brueger's uh, evidence that he published, which was the result of his own research. But I personally am convinced that this society exists that they have circular disc-shaped craft, that they fly and operate them there, and perhaps some of the disc-shaped craft that we are discovering in the reports of the Indian aboriginals of the highlands, of the upper plateau there, may be some of the vehicles from Akakor. We also know that many of the vehicles that they describe are not from Akakor, that they come from elsewhere. Some of them are extraplanetary, they come from beyond this planet, and they have unique technologies, and they have human beings aboard who are quite different and, and quite advanced over the contemporary humanity of Earth today. These humans are interacting with the natives down there also, and there is substantial evidence that these extraterrestrial races are directly connected with the earlier civilizations of Tiwanaku, of the Olmecs, of uh, a number of the other earlier civilizations in South America at a time before the last cataclysmic disturbances that changed all the society and reduced it to savagery once more. A further expedition was sent to the South Pole, Expedition Schwabenland, in order to find the land with no ice and to explore the access to the inner earth. Another expedition was sent to the Icelandic geysers, since there were insider stories about the access to the inner earth. And another expedition was organized by Sven Hedin to the Taklamakan Desert in Tibet, in order to find traces of the old culture of Ud. in the Buddhistic esoteric tradition as Shambhala is an actual area in the Taklamakan area of central China next to the Gobi Desert. In 1988, with permission of the Chinese Academy of Science, I conducted research experiments in this area and confirmed with other engineers the existence of a vast underground complex of grottos, ancient structures and buildings. And in these structures we find statues of the avatars or beings later celebrated in Buddhism. 
as the bodhisattvas, the beings that came from space, and the vimana and the tathagata. These are ancient Sanskrit terms for the vehicles of higher intelligence. In my opinion, Shambhala does exist as an underground structured civilization that is now being uncovered in Central Asia. And in this area of the Gobi, I believe we will find the origins of the Garden of Paradise, or the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, as it is referred to in our book of Genesis. One less known expedition was led to a mountain in an African desert, since there were stories by the local tribes that there existed a network of caves out of which flying objects emerged, which had also been sighted by the German expeditioners. Under the cover name, Wielandschmied, all the information about the technology of the inhabitants of the inner earth or extraterrestrials was gathered and through the SS E4 was passed on to the engineers of the weapon industry in order to develop the new technology. Flying saucers from Agatha were the result of this scientific research. The Nazis made contact with the extraterrestrials of the underground city of Antarctica. They received technical support and instruction for building flying saucers with levitation drives, similar to those used on Venus. At the end of the Second World War, the extraterrestrials ensured that the technology was returned from Earth back to these cities. They understood that the Dark Age had not yet reached its peak. The technology was returned by 30 submarines through a large commando action. Okay, let's pick up the scenario. We were originally talking about the spiriting out of the two spacecraft out of Berlin before the Allies arrived. Uh, we said that they were put aboard two submarines. They spent six months at sea, and they finally landed in Argentina. Now, from that point, they were taken into Antarctica, into a section of Antarctica called Queen's Mods Land. And there they disappeared, and uh, they were not heard of for some time. Now, intelligence sources, and of course I was in the intelligence business at that time uh, with the, the agency, reports indicated that they were in there and they were operative once again. Now, there was a major concern by world powers to go in and capture the technology and the two spacecraft which they knew were in Antarctica. And the intelligence reports indicated that one known as Admiral Byrd was to be recommissioned and he was to be sent in there to retrieve the two saucers and also the technology and personnel associated with it. Re later reports indicated that Admiral Byrd was given eight months and unlimited funding to go in and uh, pull this thing uh, successfully off. But we also know that within eight weeks he was totally defeated. Now the supposition at that point was that there was an advanced uh, civilization and technology, most probably alien. There were with the Third Reich and the SS who was in Antarctica, and that those great and developed uh, technologies were used to defeat uh, Admiral Byrd. And of course, as it turns out, even to date, they're still there. We never did successfully get them. The stories that I have uncovered about the inner earth is that very early on in the history of the Third Reich, the um, Nazi elite and especially Hitler were trying to establish contact with a civilization living in the inner earth, which was considered a, um, an Aryan civilization of an, a lot more advanced nature than their brothers, lost brothers living on the surface of the planet. The Tula Society uh, carries the name of the former capital of that civilization, someplace uh, around present-day Greenland, before the previous polar ships and before Greenland became under ice. 
Two expeditions were made in the late 30s, early 40s, one attempting to enter the North Polar water opening with a submarine, which proved unsuccessful. A second attempt was made to enter the land opening on the South Pole with an anti-gravity cigar-shaped device, basically a small prototype probably of the giant Andromeda space station that was developed later on by the uh, SS, and it proved successful. Uh, the most interesting story is the one that I heard by an American living in Florida who claims to have spent two months in the city of New Berlin. This is a city that was developed into the inner earth uh, and a part of the Germans from the South Polar Colony were admitted uh, by the inner earthlings and were allowed to build that city there. Uh, very strict admission procedures, no previous SS members, no previous concentration camp guards and so on were admitted. The rumor is that the present-day city of New Berlin is about two million people uh, population, that they have built there most of the buildings that uh, Hitler's uh, personal architect, uh, Spee, uh, was uh, planning to build. Uh, they're traveling on Icelandic passports. They are basically the new master race that is probably planned by the Illuminati to repopulate the planet. And uh, there is even a rumor that there is a New Berlin embassy in Washington on an unmar unmarked floor of a high-rise building. You probably punch a code on the elevator buttons, and when the elevator stops on that floor and the doors open, you see the sign of New Berlin uh, in the lobby. Uh, the kids of the New Berliners uh, study in major institutions around the globe. Uh, Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, Yale, and basically it is not a Nazi colony uh, that is established in the hollow earth as an enemy of the present day American and English Illuminati secret government. On the contrary, it is just uh, basically the other side of the same uh, coin. Some would even <laughs> coin the new word um, the Illuminati presence on the planet, that basically the World War II Nazis and the present-day Illuminatis in America are nothing more than the two, two sides of the same Illuminati coin. So basically this is a colony, a presence in the whole earth that has been established with a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder cooperation of the Russians and Americans, uh, organized, orchestrated, and uh, uh, performed through the quiet cooperation of the Illuminati government. After World War II, a military expedition under Admiral Byrd tried to recover the vanished technology. The extraterrestrials let him enter the inner earth to the Golden City. They delivered a request message for disarmament to the government of the United States. Admiral Byrd had to remain silent until his death. But after he died, his nephew published his diary. In my work with South African, Brazilian, and American geologists at the South Pole, it is clear that under the structures of ice, there are many layers of civilization, suggesting at one earlier point of time when the conditions of the South Pole were different. Clearly, there was some type of civilization there. The evidences of huge dinosaur intelligence suggest that this was one of the possible places for the Garden of Eden. This, of course, is assuming that the shell of the Earth had a different north and south magnetic pole. And with the shifting of the pole, this region became suddenly very, very frigid. And thus, we do not see any evidences on the surface of these so-called earlier conditions of intelligence. However, I believe with the further exploration of the documents that both Admiral Byrd brought to the attention of the world after World War II and the Brazilian Navy uncovered in 1961 with its subpole expedition that extraterrestrial intelligence is also operated out of the area of the South Pole. And in that sense, the South Pole is a connecting point with other civilizations possible extrasolar 
gardens of paradise. What was it that Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole? Incredibly enough, in an official American Navy documentary film, we found footage of what Admiral Byrd found on the South Pole. He found giant freshwater, never freezing lakes with areas around them that were uh, free of any snow. And in that film, we show footage of the uh, Navy planes landing in these lakes. But even more so, he found, uh, to his amazement, that his planes were disappearing very quickly. A lot of his planes uh, were attacked by anti-gravity devices that were operated by the Germans there, by anti-gravity saucers. A lot of them crashed into invisible barriers and disintegrated in mid-flight. This is an indication that the Germans had already perfected the force field shields and they were up and operational around the German colony at Neuschwabenland. When he was retreating, basically the whole operation lasted for one week. They started in the, at the end of February 47 and by the first week of uh, March they were through with uh, the whole operation and much, much earlier than scheduled and they departed. And in an interview at Buenos Aires on his way back, Admiral Byrd uh, made the incredible statement that the Third World War would probably be with an adversary coming from the polar regions of our planet an adversary that has the ability to fly unobstructed from pole to pole. He was referring to the Germans at their south polar colony at Neuschwabenland that were operating their um, anti-gravity craft with impunity and could fly circles around the globe and of course would shoot out of the sky any of the uh, attacking American planes. The inner terrestrials surrounded the entrance gates with an electromagnetic protective dome which no being or weapon can penetrate. After all this happened, it became the greatest secret of mankind. It started ufology as we know it today. Indeed, there is a second humanity, an inner terrestrial race who had already built cities in the inner earth before the sinking of Atlantis. These extra and inner terrestrial races built time gates and anchored these cities on a higher subatomic frequency. After the great purification, these time gates will fall and at different places there will be once again access to the underground cities. In 1961, the Brazilian Navy was conducting a series of experiments in the Antarctic. According to one of my colleagues who was in one of the naval ships, suddenly out of the ice packs, a large spacecraft emerges and takes off vertically at a terrific speed, shocking both the American and the Brazilian naval forces that were there. So it is clear that as late as 1961, we have official documentation from the Brazilian Navy that there is some other, emphasize other, underline this three or four times, life force or intelligence stationed at the South Pole, possibly to observe the uh, scientific developments on the planet, possibly to observe the uh, military operations and the forces of the East and the West, in some type of Mexican standoff as the Cold War develops. We have clear documentation from other sources and other South American governments that some technology that is not human-based is there. That is to say, some type of higher evolutionary experience is there, and this is the next chapter of our quest. Why are they here? What do they want from us? And do they, namely the higher or alien intelligence, have as, were some type of directing mechanism both for the U.S. as well as for the Soviets as to who goes into space and who conducts, as it were, the next evolutionary round of uh, space development? These are key questions that we must resolve. 
Also, gigantic cities of lights will descend out of their orbit to selected areas and will be anchored on the Earth. Right now, people who have reached a certain level of consciousness and are once again connected to the cosmic monad are drawn through their intuition to places chosen by the spiritual hierarchies in order to anchor the cities of light above these areas. These sites are absolutely secure. The Space Brothers and the spiritual hierarchies have created the so-called Islands of Light where the Earth's frequency was increased so that all human beings and light workers can find each other on that level. Such areas are recognized by the fact that they attract an especially high number of people dealing with higher knowledge. These places have a higher grid anchorage. They are places of power, activated chakras, entrances to inner earth, and a present UFO surveillance. The Space Brothers are going to pay special attention to these areas when the cataclysms begin, because that is where the seed for the new mankind will be found. That is where the first contacts will occur on a physical and telepathic level. Many small and large centers, shelters of peace, will be established by spiritual people who live together who work on themselves and teach others. To the new mankind, these sites will be study centers and the new initiation centers for the universal brotherhood. These islands of light are recognized by the fact that they do not belong to a certain denomination or sect, but that they are open to every reality and that they know that many roads lead home. The highest goal is to increasingly live our lives and love ourselves. This time there will be no arch because man himself is the arch. Again, as we raise the consciousness uh, and we transform our body from a state of corporeality, which means um, this type of substance you see, uh, and as our atoms and as our molecules and as our uh, energy speed up, the DNA system is totally transformed into a higher octave and a higher frequency so that there is a whole new strain coming in as a result of this. Um, when we're passing through, for instance, the photon belt, there will be no darkness. It's all light. Everything in the body, uh, then, uh, of importance will be etheric in nature as opposed to uh, corporeal or dense or density or whatever, you see. Um, realities that we accept today will be no more. And um, so as a, as a result of that, the DNA system and everything which constructs humanness will be changed because we will now reach for our light body and will be of the light as opposed to uh, darkness and corporeality. So any change that's signified today scientifically or, or biologically and what have you in the DNA is because of this infusion of new consciousness and new light, which of course is coming in at this point in time. We're, 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 many of us are, uh, many people already are largely light, although they, uh, they, they keep the body of corporeality to do what they have to do here on earth, you mm -hmm. see. Uh, many people are already in the fourth dimension. Uh, some are aware and some are not. Mm. But uh, that's where we all have to go. And, uh, of course, by 2011, as we pointed out, uh, all of us have the, um, the option and the, the privilege, if we choose to do so, of being in the fifth dimension. Mm. A photon belt is an intense field of photon radiation, light radiation which both according to several modern astronomers, astrologers, as well as uh, Mayan tradition, emanates from the center of our galaxy, uh, bisects the Pleiades star system and our star system at the same time. And uh, the current uh, period, we are moving in and out of this photon belt, spending several months in it every year, uh, that the frequency that we spend in the photon belt is increasing by approximately two weeks every year. And according to the calculations of the Mayan calendar, 
around the year 2011, 2012 AD, we will be fully within the photon belt and we will remain within the photon belt until around 4000 AD, according to the current calculations. And some of the work of both uh, Jose Arguelles, um, other researchers, seems to suggest that the Mayans knew about this, this cycle, that every so often, many thousand years, we go in and out of the photon belt, uh, that there seemed to have been cultural as well as different climactic and earth changes that perhaps were sort of stimulated or affected by uh, the entering and going out of that photon belt in the past history of the Earth. We are changing both DNA and RNA, many of us. Many stones, many vehicles here are, are sending, are changing our chakra systems also. There are no longer seven chakras in most of us. We are opening up new chakra systems. You'll see much more about this in the next five or ten years also. You'll begin to activate many more of them, and also your DNA and your RNA will not be replicating in the same fashions. The children who are being born, who are conscious, when they are born. And this will change also a lot. The Dark Ages. During the rule of a dark age of separation, all knowledge that is passed on and all instructions are tainted. Every religion, for instance, is a saint, a separation from the real divine inner truth of life. Religion is something that happens in God's holiest temple. Man himself in the depth of his heart and in communication with his divine inner self. Throughout the Dark Age, countless fallen sun cosmologies who have dogmatic religious views reached the earth and became our religions. They represented the climax of separation from oneself. God's channels, prophets, and mediums received their messages from the God-created and separated dimensions. Most often, the pure messages were mixed with information from the astral worlds and their own ego. There are as many truths and religions as there are worlds and heavens of polarities and levels of development in the cosmos in their different dimensions. Every social structure which serves the power of the lobbies and the ego, instead of mankind, is a split, which in the end will restructure itself or crumble. All knowledge without love is a separation from being. Whilst the old program of the Dark Age runs out with the old light workers, the Illuminati, and their plans of a world dictatorship controlling the world of finance, it will disintegrate with the changes on Earth. The new incarnated light workers of the Galactic Confederation are already leading mankind into the new golden age. After the great transformation of mankind, the Space Brothers would like to welcome us as cosmic citizens into the Galactic Confederation of Free Planets. Where do the Illuminati receive their knowledge? Well, I would use the famous uh, jokes and stories about Tesla and Edison. Uh, according to Edison, Invention was 95% perspiration and 5% inspiration. According to Tesla, the way Tesla was doing his inventions, he would have 95% inspiration and probably 5% perspiration. Tesla would get the vision. All he has to do is put the vision into paper. Then he has to take the paper to the engineers to put it into metal in the shop. A little fine tuning here and there and the device works. This is the usual mode through which information and know-how is channeled from the extraterrestrial and even higher levels of existence to our planet. The know-how is given and we are left to put it into our crude terrestrial engineering and manufacturing methods. That's why the crude anti-gravity saucers of the 1880s, 1890s were made with rivets. Uh, giant cannons were used to 
fired the first anti-gravity devices toward the moon. Later on, in the early 1900s, more advanced technologies were used, but always the technology would follow up with our terrestrial one. Why are there two totally different scientific and engineering realities on the planet? Why the mass consumption engineering culture is 50 to 100 years behind the secret culture developed by the Illuminati? I have always had this very big question, very, very big puzzle in front of me. Uh, this is the Promethean dilemma for me. How come that with these incredibly good intentions to elevate the scientific and technological level of our civilization, we end up with the very negative and dismal results of all of these efforts? My feeling is that uh, basically that is the major mode through which the, should I call it the independent, angelic presence on the planet is trying to uh, corrupt the scientific and the political minds of the elite of our planet with visions of grandeur, with technologies that are too far ahead possibly for our spiritual and moral development, and that are very dangerous that can explode any minute and basically uh, bring the end of our civilization, as has happened for dozens of times on our same planet. Again, information coming to us from many extraterrestrial revelations about previous illuminated efforts to speed up the evolution on the planet that ended up in very brutal, uh, violent nuclear wars. Uh, the Illuminati have an agenda that would probably not be accepted in a normal, open voting system by the majority of the population on the planet. The creation of a new master race with hybridization, experiments done with animals. The first hybrids were done in German concentration camps 50 years ago, and there are people that have seen documentary films about living, walking, breeding hybrids between humans and animals. Uh, creation of a new master race of, uh, under illuminated guidance and probably away from a package of genetic material that was introduced on the planet through an intervention by the Trinity. The dark as well as the light power serves only one master who is the creator of all that is and whose goal is to create the superhuman. The final goal of human reincarnation is to create a human being who has experienced all imaginable positive and negative experiences and therefore is able to develop beyond any judgment into the humanly incarnated image of God. A human being who has become God has lived through the completed range of the cosmic keyboard from the lowest to the highest note. God does not judge. He shines on his creations like a sun, on the flowers or the weeds or on his being. The experiment of duality has come to an end and the planet Earth is an ascending planet onto which the Creator himself incarnates in the shape of human beings. The return of the ascended brotherhood from Lemuria and Atlantis is the return of the 144,000 masters of light, the cosmic monads. They are incarnated as human beings, united, and together they will represent the White Pyramid, God's Eye, who sees everything, the presence of the Almighty on Earth. They are the open witnesses who have all described from a different perspective the process of ascension, since they have already lived through it before. <laughs>